Hallelujah. Amen. Continue to praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when I told the Lord yes one day. How many of you remember, amen, the day that you gave the Lord your gift? Hallelujah, God. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your way, God. Yes all day, God, in every way. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today, God. Give me all the glory and all the praise on today, God. God, we thank you today, amen, for the ability, God, amen, to say yes on today, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, that you have sent, God, amen, that he died for our sins, God, and shed his blood for us, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we ask that you would rest upon us on today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, have your way in this service on today, God. Hallelujah, God. Throw your weight around, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Lift up the hung down heads of your people, God. Hallelujah, God. Save souls on today, God. Deliver and set free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We ask that you would bless the speaker on today, God. Hallelujah, God. Touch him from the crown of his head, God, to the soles of his feet, God. God, give him a word on today, God, and help him to deliver clearly, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we continue to pray for our, not only our local church, God, but our district and our state and our jurisdiction, God. God, we ask that you would rest upon our leaders, God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, in our in our church community, God, in the name of Jesus. God, as we continue to fight on through this pandemic, God, keep us safe and in your will, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. No! 
thank you, Jesus Christ. I love the Lord, saints. I love the Lord with all of my heart. Thank you, Jesus. To our beloved pastor, Superintendent Leroy Williams. Amen. To our Take Kimball family, God bless you. We love you with the love of God. It's so good to see so many of you in the house this morning. Amen. Thank God for you. Some of you have, we haven't seen you in a whole year. So it's just a blessing to see you this morning. And keep on coming. Let God bless you real, real good. Someone was telling me last time, it's better to be in the house in the service of the Lord than to be listening on Facebook and watching on Facebook. They said it's a lot better to be in the house. So I thank God for us being in the house of the Lord this morning. To our live stream viewers, our lady Dolores Williams, and I greet you this morning in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for allowing us to come into your home, amen, this morning via Facebook Live and conference call. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. We appreciate you watching Sunday after Sunday. God bless you. We pray that you're receiving a word from the Lord, that you're being blessed. By the service that we're rendering here at Take Temple Church of God in Christ. Because I didn't come for a fool and I didn't come for a fashion. But I come to give God the glory. Yeah. He's been too good to me not to give us the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. You can sit down on God if you want to. But I tell you, I can't help myself. Ha! Glory to God. I can't help it. This thing is all on the inside. Hallelujah. And it springs up like a whale of water. Facebook this morning. How do we ask you to share? Hit that share that share button with us this morning. Share it with your family and your friends. Amen. Let's praise the Lord together. Amen. In the beauty of home. You can praise him at home. Like I said, it's not the thing, but you can still praise him in your home. Amen. You can sing right along with us. You can clap your hands out right along with us. Pray with us. Whatever we're doing, you do that as well. Amen. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we have come for no other purpose than to lift up the name of Jesus on this first Sunday in June. Amen. This Sunday was not promised to us, saints, but we're here. Therefore, I count it a blessing to yet be in the land of the living. Amen. We all have a reason and a right to give God praise this morning. And I want you to give God your best praise. Give him your best praise. Praise him like you love him. Amen. I tell you, when I want to really want something on the Superintendent Williams, I really know how to love on the men, you know. I really know how to pour on the charm. Hallelujah. Y'all got to love on Jesus. He loved to be loved on. Amen. Amen. Love him like it's your last time. Who knows? It could be our last opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus. God bless you, saints. Again, I want to want you to know that you, we're praying for you. We're praying for the sick and the shut in. We're praying for the bereaved families, my God, that have lost loved ones. We're praying for every soul that don't know the Lord. And we're praying for the healing of our nation. So be healed this morning. Be delivered and be set free. Set your eye on happy nation. And enjoy the rest of the service. May God bless you. May God keep you in our prayer. And I often stay, stay blessed. Stay safe, but most of all, stay connected to God. May God bless you. At this time, my old sister Tina Johnson is coming with observation. I want to say amen for her as she comes. God bless you. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Greet each day with your eyes open to beauty, your mind open to change, and your heart open to love. An open mind is the only way new things can come in. Mm -hmm. yes. Good morning, Take Temple members, Amen. live stream Amen. viewers, and Amen. conference call worshipers. These are your observations for June 6, 2021. Please join us for our morning worship experience each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. via Facebook Live or dial the conference call number 712-770-5561 using the access code 736706 pounds. Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday evening at 6. 
Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. and Sunday evening at 6 p.m. are other worship opportunities to receive yeah. biblical instruction. Yeah. Please join us using the same conference call number as morning worship. Yeah. Thank you, members, for your continuous financial support. Please continue to bless the ministry by giving your tithe, offering, and pledge. Yeah. You may bring your monetary gift to the finance office by 12 p.m. today. To live stream viewers, and members, you may bless this ministry also by using Giveify Cash App or mail your gift to Take Temple, P.O. Box 193, Arkansas. Amen. Please join us as we celebrate our 104th church anniversary. Amen. 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 This special service will convene on Sunday morning, June 27th at 11 a.m. Yes. A church anniversary letter with a building fund razor sheet attached and building fund C offering pledge forms are available at the check-in station. All members, please pick up these forms today. Yes. Please turn in your form to pastor's office and if possible, submit your pledge in full by June 27th. Yes. The guest speaker will be Pastor Andre Hendricks of Rosser Sanctuary Church of God in Christ in Rosser, Texas. Any member who would like to serve on the committee for the interior decorating of our new church, please contact First Lady Williams or text Sister Phyllis Delos at 870-403-8611. The groundbreaking ceremony scheduled for this afternoon has been tentatively can't rescheduled for next Sunday afternoon at, on June 13th at 3 p.m. due to the high percentage chance of rain. Please plan to join us for this very special occasion. We are praying for favorable weather Amen. as we prepare to move forward with the building project of Greater Tate Temple. There will be Sunday school this evening at 6 p.m. The more, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. Happy June birthday wishes to all members and live stream viewers. Yeah. Happy birthday. May your special day be filled with much love, joy, peace, and happiness. Enjoy another blessed year of life. Amen. Now the hour has come to hear and receive the morning gospel message. Amen. 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 It is a pleasure as I yeah. present to some and introduce to others this chosen man of God who continues to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with power and conviction. He is an anointed vessel who exemplifies holiness and righteous living. He is one of humility, wisdom, courage, and strength. He is God's chosen vessel, a true servant and a leader who is equipped to bring forth the word of God without fear or compromise. From his profound teaching and preaching, Ministry lives have been impacted, empowered, and transformed. Yes. Following the music ministry, please prayerfully receive our pastor, District Superintendent Leroy Williams, for the spoken word. Yes. Your value does not decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Understand your worth, value your life, appreciate your blessings. May your week be filled with great joy, peace, and health as you continue to trust in Him. Have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Come on, shout again. I'm healed. Rip his stripes. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Diabetes as a strike. Hallelujah. Glory that we equip his strike. Hallelujah. When you go to the doctor, they have different prescriptions for different ailments. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus has a strength that was laid upon him. Amen. And because of it, we are healed. We are healed. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We do give honor to God today and to his son Jesus, the head of my life. Amen. To our elders, to the ministers today, and to missionaries, amen, deacon brethren. Praise God to all of the saints of God and, and to us. Amen. Special first lady today and to the praise team, musicians, to everybody that is here. Amen. We ought to be able to look at somebody and say, it's good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may not be on good talking turn, but tell them anyway, it's good to see you. Thank you, Jesus. And because you couldn't have been here. Or you could have been blind. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We owe God praise for all his blessings. For all his blessings. And I thank him for keeping me saved, sanctified, right now filled with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost and that with fire. And I still have that mind to live for the Lord. Amen. Saints, whatever you do, don't let the devil get control of your mind. Amen. Amen. Keep the mind of Christ. Keep the mind of Christ. So we're just grateful. We're grateful for the Lord for this day because he has been good to us. Amen. Uh, briefly, amen. Briefly, I'm going to move on to uh, get into the word today. And uh, I'm just going to let it stop right there. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Beginning at the first verse. Matthew 4 and 1. Beginning at the first verse. And we will read. Then, then, amen, immediately, this then happened now. Then, while, while Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, yeah. command that these stones be made bread. If you be the son of God, mm. command that these stones be made bread. Right. You don't have to prove anything to the devil. Yeah, but he answered and said, it, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Amen. Amen. The highest point, which they say was about 700 feet. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And said unto him, if you be the son of God, here again, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angel charge concerning you in their hands. They shall bury you up. Lest at any time you should dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again. Praise God, the word of God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. 
Eighth verse again, the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain. Praise God. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I own Ella Johnson's automobile personally, how can he give it to me when I already own it? Thank you, Jesus. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then, let me say, then, the devil left him. And behold, an angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. We're going to use for a thought right quickly. I hope victory by overcoming temptation. Victory by overcoming temptation. Amen. Amen. You tell me, say victory by overcoming temptation. Amen. It's not a sin to be tempted. Thank you, Jesus. For the sin come in is when you yield to the temptation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why was Jesus being tempted now? Why was he being tempted now? Right after his baptism and right before the lunch of his ministry. Praise God. Right before the launching of his ministry. See, the devil knew what was coming in the future. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is one primary reason, one primary reason why Jesus was tempted at this time. Jesus Christ was about to launch his ministry. Launch his ministry. And the devil knew what was going to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. See, sometimes when we get saved, we get filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. We don't take the time to wait on God. We don't take the time to fast and pray. Amen. We get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost this week, two weeks from now. Amen. We carry our Bible like we've been having it for years and ready to start preaching and, oh God, witnesses your folks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus did something before he praised God. That's right. Glory to God. That's it. it was an unbelievable ministry. Everybody did not believe Jesus. Right. Everybody not going to believe you. Right. Every word you teach, every word you preach, somebody's not going to believe it. Yeah. They're going to talk about your ministry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. In other words, they're going to say you need to be at home. You need to be at home. You just got saved out here trying to witness to somebody. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're going to talk about you. They're not going to believe what you say. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. An unbelievable ministry, but that was to determine the eternal fate of every person who had ever lived or ever would live. His ministry was going to, amen, determine our fate. Right. We are going back with Jesus. Are we going to hell? Yeah. The ministry is going to determine that. That's right. One way or the other. Amen. To everyone. He was led by the Spirit. All right. Now this is something now. He was led by the Spirit. Uh -huh. We already led by the Spirit. Right. To separate himself from food and from everything else. Yeah. Amen. You're really serious about God. You're really serious about your ministry. Amen. Praise God. Come a time then you have to push the plate back. You have to pray. Fast and pray. If you really are sincere about it. Jesus was sincere about the ministry that he was beginning to get ready to start. Hallelujah. He got alone for 40 days and 40 nights. In order to be with God. To be with God. 
He didn't need a lot of distraction. He didn't need people calling on him and asking for something. Now, pray, man, pray for me. Heal my daughter. Heal my son. He didn't need this at this time. Praise God. He needed to be alone with the Father. Glory to God. So he was led by the Spirit, amen, to go into the wilderness. To be with God. He prepared himself for ministry. Prepared himself for ministry. Amen. And like I said, you don't get saved today, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're ready for ministry tomorrow. Hallelujah. You got to prepare yourself for ministry. Amen. Because see, the devil is out there. He's waiting. Just like he was waiting on Jesus. He's waiting on you. Amen. Though he were the son, he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Amen. Not that he was he was wrong, he had committed sin, or he was disobedient, amen. But Christ took on that human side as well as the spiritual. Amen. And this is an example to us, even though we are sons of God. Amen. Yet we, 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 we learn through obedience to God. Amen. And suffering come with that. If you want to be a, have a ministry, prepare yourself to suffer. Prepare yourself for suffering. Amen. I remember Bishop Anderson talking about when he first went out, you know, evangelism, evangelizing, and quit his job and all that. Amen. Praise God. Eventually, he had to go back and get that job. Because there was some suffering took place. And his wife was on him. Bill got to be paid. Amen. Some suffering. But if you suffer through it, amen, you can't reign. Blessings can come your way. Amen. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to abide and to help them that are tempted. Because Jesus was tempted. He resisted the temptation. He came through the temptation. He came out victory with victory. And because he did that, he can help us. Yeah. Amen. If I never been through a situation and you come to me for help, how am I going to help you? I don't know. I don't have the answer because I've never been through it. But Jesus went through it. And because he did, he can help us through our what? Temptations. For we have not a high priest. Praise God. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus felt what we felt. He feels now what we feel. Amen. He feels our pain. He feels our sorrows. He knows what we're going through. He knows when we're being tempted. He knows that. But we have a high priest. We have Christ to turn to because he know our feelings yeah. and our infirmities. But was in all point tempted like as we are yet without sin. Yeah. He was tempted but without sin. Uh -huh. The problem with us sometimes, we be tempted and we yield to the sin. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Mm -hmm. We yield to the sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers and pastors have messed up the day because they were, they was tempted and they yielded to the sin. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. What the devil wants to do with us is to pull us down, to stop us, yeah. pull us back into sin. Yeah. If we're not very careful, the temptation, the temptation. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Oh, that is a beautiful watch. That's a beautiful something there, a beautiful purse. Amen. And nobody watching me. Take it. The devil tell you to take it. Nobody's watching you. Hallelujah. But there's always an unseen eye. The camera might not be on you, but there's an unseen eye that sees everything that we do. Then he said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. Uh -huh. Come boldly. Uh -huh. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come boldly. See, it's hard to get people down to come boldly. It's hard to even get people to get in sometimes get in a prayer line and admit that they are sinners. That they need to be saved. That I am a sinner. Amen. Because see, you you would you would ask people, hey, how many sinners do I have in the house? Amen. If you're a sinner, that's what you do. Just set up old, yeah, I'm one. I need to be saved, though. How many hypocrites in the house? But we need to come boldly unto the throne of grace. Get out of that shameless. Who's watching me? What they going to say about me? Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. If you want mercy, you got to come to God. You got to come to Christ if you want mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Jesus is the one that can help us in time of need because he's already been through it. Already been through it. Hallelujah. The devil knows just where to tempt a person. That's it. That's it. He knows just where to tempt a person. That's it. The devil knows. Number one, in the wilderness. Come on. Come on. In the wilderness. Yeah. When a person is without bread. Yeah. When a person is without bread, people will steal if they are, if they are hungry and they don't know where the next meal is coming from. They don't have any bread. They will steal That's it. if you don't have Christ. That's it. Hallelujah. But Jesus, see, you got to know that I, I believe that I never seen the righteous for sin, yes. nor his seed for begging yes. bread. If you in Christ, you may go hungry. You didn't eat anything today. By the night, you're hungry. But I just don't believe if you are in Christ and you know him and he know you. Come on, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That God is going to let you go for days and days and days without something to eat. That's now, if you fast, then that's, yeah, that's different. You're doing that on your own. That's it. Because he never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor did see begging. I don't think I'm going to have to be running around to in the community, going to Brother Ronnie's house, amen, going to Sister Anderson's house, amen, going to Sister Bursa's house. Amen. I need some bread. I need some bread. I'm hungry. Ain't got nothing to eat. I ain't so believe God going to let me get to that point. Why? Because I belong to him. But the devil knows just where to tempt a person. In the wilderness, when a person is without bread, when he is really have need. Yeah. Hallelujah. He approached Jesus after Jesus had done all of this fasting. Oh, oh. Hungry. Yes, this is the temptation that appeals to the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Your flesh is lusting for something to eat. Mm -hmm. You need something to eat. You need you hungry. Mm -hmm. And the devil, praise God, will attempt you yeah. to take that trachea when it know it not belongs to you. <laughs> he catch you at those weak points. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Net number two on the pinnacle. When a person is before multitudes, it's easy to be tempted. When you are before multitudes. That's why we have to be careful when we be elevated. Because when elevation puts you before people, before multitudes, and if you're not careful, he'll tempt you to get beside yourself. You'll get headed up, high-minded. Hallelujah. You start looking down, oh, looking down on people. I used to sit where they sit, but now I'm sitting where they appear. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Watch it, watch it. The devil tempt you to have nothing to do with them. 
to walk by those people. Those that you used to bump, shake hands with. I'm above them now. This is the temptation that appeals to pride. The pride of life. Fame. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I remember a young lady told a young man one time after her daddy made bishop, I can't talk to you no more. My dad is a bishop now. <laughs> Now, what does that do with you? Your dad is the bishop. Thank you, Jesus. Number three, on a high mountain. On a high mountain. When a person sees what is available, sometimes rightfully he is. See? The earth is the law and the fullness thereof. So what could the devil give Christ? It's rightfully his. Sometimes just desires. Just desires. If you desire something, you're not careful too long. You may be tempted to try to get it any way you can. To acquire it any way you can. Help us, help us. This is the temptation that appeals to the lust of the eyes. Amen. The lust of the eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why I tell young men, you know, say men, church, don't, don't, you know, you married, now they're going to be looking at some of the woman too long. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how pretty she is, how beautiful she is. Glance. And you don't look too long. Amen. Oh, see, the devil wants to tempt you. He wants to attempt you. Same one with the, with the, with the ladies. Amen. Hey, Amen. Go home and fix up what you got. Put a new suit on it. New pair of shoes. New tie. New shirt. Get him a new hat. Fix it up. Hallelujah. But because we're not, we're not very careful, the devil will tempt you to leave what you have to go on after something because they dress well. Hallelujah. But what's in the heart? What's in the heart? Maybe a wife beater. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was tempted immediately after his baptism. He had just had a mountaintop experience. Praise God, had been baptized, the Holy Ghost had came down in the form of a dove and lit up on him, and the Father had spoken out of heaven, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, have mountaintop experience, a very special experience with God. Yeah, yeah. Then immediately, Satan attacks him. Yeah. Satan knew what his mission was, yeah. what he was on earth to do, why he came to save us. The devil knew that. So I got to stop him in his tracks. If I can get him, if I can get Jesus to yield to me, then that's it. It's over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes I think the devil think that same way today. If I can just get the leader, if I can just get the pastor of that church, if I can get him to mess up. Praise God. If I can get him messing around with one of the sisters in the church, if I can just get him to do it. Yeah, my God. That's it, my God. Then what can he say to them other brothers around there? That's it. Mess around, I just thought just getting them messed up, messed up too. That's it. That's it. I the whole church is messed up. That's, it. That's the devil's mission. Yeah, my God. My God. Yeah. The devil attacks him. If the devil attacks Jesus, what do you think about us? 
Jesus was led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. That's what I got. The Spirit led him to be tested. To be tempted by the devil. And we all will be tested. You may have a high heart testimony, but get ready. The test is coming. I said the test is coming. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was tempted for three reasons. To learn obedience. See, in, in, in this church, amen, if you want to have a ministry, God then saved you and fills you, and you want to have a ministry, one of the things you must learn, I don't care how hard-headed you was before you got in the church, you need to learn to be obedient now. Amen. Amen. My God, my God. Amen. You may be, you may be uh, disobedient, hard-headed to that husband at home, but once Christ comes into your life, he changes you. You's a new creature in Christ. And then, then you go back home and say, yes, honey. Yes. Why? Because you've been changed. Yes. Learn obedience. The control of his body, mind, and spirit. Because see, Jesus was born human just like us. Amen. Control of his body, his mind, and his spirit. Yes. To secure righteousness. To secure righteousness, the idea of perfection and sinlessness for man. Uh -huh. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, for he has made him to be sin for us uh -huh. who knew no sin. Uh -huh. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh -huh. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh -huh. He knew no sin. He made it through all of that temptation without sinning. Yes, My God. Yes, but he took on the sins of the world for us. He took on our sins. I know sin. I can't have, I don't have to testify that testimony. I don't know any sin. On, <laughs> if you meet a man or a woman down here on the earth that they don't have no sin, you just walk on away from them. You know it falls already. That's it. I know that's right. To experience all the infirmities of human life so he would be able to aid and help us. We have no excuse. Because Jesus would have took it on himself. Well, since Jesus was God's son, he had all power. He didn't have he took it on himself. Just like we have to take it off. Yeah. Yeah. He experienced all the infirmities mm -hmm. of human life. It doesn't say in the Bible what Jesus was ever sick with. That he would lay up at home in the bed being sick. It don't tell us that in the Bible. But it did say he experienced all yeah. of the infirmities of human life. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that he would be able to secure or able to aid or help us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, Jesus didn't have to worry about missing church because he never gets sick. He took them all. Now, I tell you, you can't read it in the Bible what ailments that he had. It didn't list those. But we do know he was pierced in his side. That was a crown of thorns placed on his head. He was injured. Hallelujah. Glory God. Nails drove through his feet and in his hands. He took on some things that we probably never will. I got to close it. Let no man say, James 1, 13 through 15, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God do not tempt you with anything. The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. By who? The devil. God do not tempt us with sin. 
Now we may be tested. He may allow the devil to test us. The devil will tempt us. But God do not tempt any man with sin. Amen. So he said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Amen. Neither tempt he any man. Okay. So when no temptation come up on you, that's not from God. Hallelujah. But he will allow us, just like he did his son Jesus, to be tempted by the devil. To be tested in this way. Yeah. And the only way you know that you can make it is, praise God, you talk about, you got to be tested. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. I never know to know, amen, what kind of grades I made in high school unless I was tested. And I never knew how I passed until they told me, yeah, you made a, a D plus or something. D. <laughs> I let me know I passed. <laughs> but if it had been the F, <laughs> let me go back <laughs> and start over again. Yeah. See, sometimes we have to, if we, if we fail the test, yeah. if we fail through the temptation, yeah. And get an F. Just turn around and go back and start over again. God forgive me. I failed the test. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is important to remember that God does not tempt man. James 1 and 13. God allows man to be tempted for the same reason he led Christ to be tempted. God allows man to be tempted. Yeah. So when temptation comes, and you as a saint of God, amen, God allows it to come. Now the thing is, are you going to have victory over the temptation? Yeah. Are you going to give in to the devil? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God allowed man to be allowed man to be tempted to prove and demonstrate his faith. Yes, to strengthen and prepare him for heavier responsibility. Right to demonstrate the mercy, grace, and power of God in our human life. Yes. God allows temptation. Christ met temptation by doing three things. And I'm closing. He spent time along with God. This is how he met the temptation. He spent time alone with God. Yeah, yeah. You got to spend some time with God. Yeah. My God. With God. It doesn't mean you got to come through these doors right here all the time, but you got to spend some time with God. Yeah. But he does want you to assemble yourself together, amen, with us. Yeah. But you got to spend some time alone. All right, yeah. That's right. With God. He made sure he was led by the Spirit. Yeah. He made sure he was led by the Spirit. Yeah. Whatever you do, be led by the Spirit yeah. of God. Yeah. You can't go wrong being led by the Spirit yeah. of God. Yeah. Now, there's another Spirit, but be, make sure you be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. He relied upon the scripture. All right. Take the word of God with you. Yeah. Take the spirit and the word of God and, and spend some time with God everywhere you go. Yeah. Right. Amen. If things get tough, things like it getting tougher, amen, you got the word. All right. Now, word have I hidden in my heart? Yeah. Now, what might I do what? Take the word. Keep it hidden in your heart. That way you can reach and get it whenever you need it. You may be riding down the highway. Amen. Praise God. Your Bible in the back seat. You can't reach back and get the Bible to open it up. But if you got the word right here. You just start meditating on the word. What God said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil is the tempter. 
He is the one who tempted Jesus Christ. He was the spiritual power who attempted to destroy the purpose of Christ. He knew the purpose of Christ. He knew why he was coming. He knew why he came. So he was attempted to destroy the purpose of Christ. Your purpose also is to live holy. Yes, sir. It's to live for the Lord. Yes. To tell others about Christ. Yes. Don't let him destroy that purpose. Yes. In your life. Yes. Your purpose is not to sit up high. Yes. Your purpose is not to just dress up and just appear yes. all the time. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your purpose is not to just ride around in fine automobiles, yes. live in a fine home. Yes. Amen. But you have a purpose. Yes. You that are righteous have a purpose. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Go tell it everywhere, everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. Yes. That he's the Savior of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. We have a message to give. Yes. We have a message to give. Yes. The believer must prepare for combat. Yes. Yes, We're in a war. And we must prepare for combat. Amen. Praise God. When I got drafted, I'm told when I got drafted into the military. Amen. Praise God. Those civilian clothes that I had when I got there, they said you might as well just box them up from the and send them back home. But we don't need those anymore. We got the clothes for you. We got the uniform for you. Because what? You in the army now. We prepare you. For service. Amen. They didn't just send me, pray God, to somewhere else. They said, now, first of all, you got to go through boot camp. You got to go through training. Hallelujah. And they had straight rules. See, a lot of times in the church, we don't want straight rules. When I first got to boot camp, I couldn't even leave the barracks to go to the PX to get some stamps. We had to pick one person out of the whole group to make the trip for everybody. That was a rule. I couldn't walk. When I walked out the door, I couldn't, I couldn't just walk out the door and just walk the campus. When I hit the steps, I had to be running. The first six weeks, every time I walked out the door, I better be running. Training. Discipline. Obedience. Four o'clock in the morning, you had to get up. And we had to go run before breakfast. Dark. PT, that's it. Training. Disciplining the body, getting the body fixed. Ready, ready, get up. The mind. Hallelujah. So you have to prepare for ministry. Prepare for ministry. So the old preachers came along. Most of them, when they started preaching, they were already deacons. Or they were Sunday school teachers. Working in the church, they said when the Lord called. But we got to now get saved, sanctified, feel the Holy Ghost. Never know what a deacon, never know what to need to teach a class, and they think, no, I've been called to preach. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. My God. Never picked up paper, swept the floor. And yet still, I'm saved now. I'm ready. I've been called to preach. My God. Yes, we're yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. More than just carrying this Bible. Yes, sir. More than just sitting up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you're going to meet the devil, we're standing there. You're going to meet the devil. He's just waiting. 
He heard you when he said, I'm saved. He sanctified him with the Holy Ghost. See, he don't have to bother you as long as he got you. But as soon as you say, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, come to Jesus, look for him. Expect him. And he said, the Lord gave me a ministry. The Lord told me to go and visit the homes and pray for the sick. Shut in. Look for him. Because he will tempt you. He will test you. I told you all about the, about the time we went to the nursing home. Woman just cursed us out. She heard us next door praying. We come around to her door. She cursed us out. Don't come in here with that dog. So so mess. But, but we were prepared for ministry. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. And move on to the next door. See, I was prepared for ministry one time from Bailey. And, and I got talked about right in, in the, from the pool pit in the church. And I thought they brought my little message. I thought I'd done a good job. <laughs> believe, it, believe it at that time, got up just rebuked me or whatever you call it. Scorned me right there for me. I thought I was ready for ministry. So I guess I let the I guess I let the devil talk to me because I had made my mind I'm through. I ain't gonna preach no more. I ain't gonna uh, I don't want to take this, I'm not gonna preach anymore. But God has somebody to come to me. Gave me the encouraging words. First of all, they asked, Who called you? Hallelujah. I said, The Lord did. Well, he said, It's the word that you preach. But God gave you the preach. And that encouraging words lifted me. So we have to be prepared because this is what we're going to run into. In ministry. Is there one today? Is there one today? Is Jeremiah said was just like fire? He shall be my moments. He is going to hold it peace. Amen. And I've been going ever since. Is there one today? Maybe you were watching us on Facebook. Conference call. Listen to me. If that's you today, you can have victory over temptations. But it's going to take the power of God in your life. Giving your life to Him. He can see you through it. He can help you. He can give you power over the devil through the Holy Ghost. Bless you today. Just raise your hand where you are and say, God, I surrender my life. I surrender to you today. I give my life. Come in and save me.
have given to thee through tithes and offers. Restore it back to the God. In the name of Jesus, bless every giver, everyone that desire to give. And God touch the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus. And we'll forever give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe see it. This before we go into Holy Communion. Thanks. Thank you for joining us this morning. Join us again next Sunday. We love you.